Hello and welcome to this Tiger webinar. This session will be around Teams and what we can deliver through Tiger Prism's dashboards. Collaboration tools like Microsoft Teams enable your staff to work together wherever they may be located. It's a great way to bring remote workers together. It keeps remote workers and mobile employees collaborating while they're on the go. Your staff can connect via voice, video, or simply instant message for quick answers. The benefits of a tool like Microsoft Teams goes beyond the way it empowers collaboration and sharing. It also offers detailed reporting of how and how much your people use the platform through Tiger Prism. With user activity reporting, you can see how many users engage via chat channels, who uses private chat, users who leverage the platform for calls and meeting tools, who has been calling who, who has joined meetings and with what media types, what is your adoption of Microsoft Teams. You can see this data for your whole organization or for an individual user if you want to analyze usage in this way. Tiger Prism is integrated with Office 365 using a cloud connector graph API to gather statistics about your Microsoft estate. Tiger will then apply supplementary context around the Office 365 and team statistics by applying departmental hierarchy to each person using a supplied hierarchy by the company. This then allows for security to be applied at all levels using Tiger Prism security module, making sure people only can see what they are authorized to. Tiger Prism can also contextualize data allowing for business decisions to be made. Throughout this webinar, we will be discussing how we can use Tiger Prism to visualize the data through our Microsoft Teams dashboards and how our security context works with this data. Also covering some customer common questions based on experience with our current customer base. So let's begin and start looking at the dashboards Tiger Prism can offer to you. Let's start this section by first looking at the organizational insight dashboards, beginning with the user activity dashboard. The user activity dashboard allows for users activity to be aggregated by an organizational structure through either a department, cost center or project tree. To select items, you simply go to the item selector option. Click on this item selector and you can now choose from your tree which items you wish to add to your dashboard. To do this, simply come to the item you wish to add on the left hand side and drag from the left into the right hand pane. If you wish to select more than one item, you can go to the cog on the right hand side and click select all child items. This will then move all items from that level and below in to the item selector on the right. If you wish to remove items from the right, you can simply click on the cross at the end of each line, or you can reorder these items by moving them up and down. If you wish to search for a particular item, there is a filter option at the top of this window. Simply type in the word you are looking for and click on the magnifying glass to find that item. Note, this is a wildcard search and will search for all items within the tree. The line charts then represent the total counts for each of the measures. The data within this graph is a total of selections made within the directory items. This is a table that's containing the totals and percentages aggregated by the individual's items types. The percentages reflect the popularity of activities made by this organization or person. Once you have selected an item in this top window, the child items for that selection will be displayed with its details in the window below, giving you more insight to what that team is up to, allowing you to sort and filter to find out who is using that feature the most. Or on the flip side, who is maybe not using that feature? And maybe that's where you can concentrate your training sessions to empower those users to use those features correctly. We can now look at the device utilization dashboard. Microsoft Teams data includes device metrics 
allowing for Tiger Prism to group a user's activity to the device type they are using. Within this dashboard, we can visually represent the popularity of each device available within your organization. By hovering over any of the points on the graph, this will display the corresponding data values. The tables below do represent the values broken down by the person selected within the directory. These tables can then be sorted and filtered upon accordingly. These could be filtered on names, paths, and maybe even total interactions. You can use this information to look at how your users are using Teams and from which devices and making sure they are connecting to Teams on devices that are provided by the company. For example, if there are interaction on Android devices and these devices are not company compliant to your business, is this allowed? And should you be investigating who is using these devices? All this information could be used in a different way. Maybe you have rolled out Teams on iOS devices and nobody is now using it. You can now train those users on how to use Teams on an iOS device by maybe doing a short webinar session. Let's now go and look at the user insights section. And specifically, let's look at the adoption dashboards. Within the adoption dashboards, you can set your date range at the top here. You can then to begin to see how many of your users have interacted with the Teams element of Teams. This is slightly different to the private messages. So when you look at Teams, you have the option to send a private message or a message into a Teams channel. So the Teams messages will tell you how many users are available to use Teams. So in this instance here, 54, and how many of those users in that period, so here for January 2021, have used the Teams feature. So we have 10 users here, meaning an 18.52% utilization or adoption of Teams messaging. With private messaging here, this is how many private messages have been sent through the private message channel. Here, we can see again, we had 54 users available and 29 of those users, which is 53.7%, have used private messaging during that period. We can then start to look who's been using the call feature within Teams. Again, there are 54 users available and 29 of our users have utilized the call features. And over here is the meetings. So this is whether a user has joined a meeting or created a meeting. Again, in the month period, there were 54 users available and we can see that 29 of them used or created a meeting. Down here has, is has other action. Has other action is any interaction with Teams that is not one of the four points here. So for example, another action could be liking a comment. It could be somebody going into Teams and using one of the plugins. It could be somebody going into Teams and searching for a message. Therefore, they have interacted with Teams but not done one of the other four interaction types here. Finally is the team's adoption. So how many of our users have uniquely done any of these five actions here? So in the month of January, we had 54 users available and 29 of our users interacted with teams in any one of these five options meaning our team's adoption for January was 53.7%. If I change these date periods, to individual days, I can then see the breakdown also by day. As expected, the team's interactions over the weekends will be a lot less. 
Let's now begin to look at the Cool Insight dashboards, specifically here looking at the Team Performance dashboard. The Team Performance dashboard allows you to group users by their department, displaying both call summaries and details by caller and callee. The dashboard is built around allowing managers to look at their staff and how well they are performing. What will happen is they can come again into their directory picker, select the item they are looking for, and if they wish to add all of their child items, they can select all their child items and reorder if required. They can then select their dates, either by using the quick dates or the specific dates. I'm going to look at last month. I then click the refresh button and this then gives me the information about what happened last month. In the left hand pane, it will now give me the information about my team. From a manager's perspective, I want to see how many sessions a particular user in my team has been on. I can then see that by how many of those sessions he was a caller and how many of the sessions he was a callee. It will then give me the total duration that employee has been on the phone for. It will then break it down by the call type. So the duration by the user as a caller and the duration by the user as a callee. As I select my items on the left hand side, you will see the grids here on the right update. This will allow you to pick on a particular user and see more information also about that particular employee. If I'm then looking for how many calls a user has made, I can visually see here in these boxes. By clicking on these boxes, the grids below are interactive and then filter as per my selection at the top. So if I want to see all of the sessions as this user here as the call lead, I can select this and it will then display all of my calls below. This will then tell me which modality they have been using. So for example here, it's audio. And in this one here, they had screen sharing, video and audio. There then is the ability to filter on whether they had audio, had video or did screen sharing. And you can enable this by setting the filters here. Therefore, by giving managers access to this dashboard, they can self-serve and look at the information that they require. Within the Call Insight dashboards is also the Modality Type Adoption dashboard. Within the Modality Type Adoption dashboard, you can see which departments are using which modalities. So for example, which department is using screen sharing more, video calls or audio calls. This will then allow you to aggregate over the departments that you have selected. So again, with your directory picker, you can select all the items you wish to, to see in your dashboard. Click confirm. Within your quick dates or your specific dates, you can then choose the data you want to look at. So again, I will look at last month. In here then will show me the total amount of sessions made by those departments. And it will then show me how long they've been on the phone for. And I can then select those departments and see which modalities they've been using and for what duration. It will then give me the percentage breakdown of those modality types. This will then help you target training at those particular departments. So for example, within consulting, if they're not doing screen-based sharing as much, why is it? Is it that they don't understand it? Is it that they need to be trained on how to use it? This will help you though, acknowledge which departments are using which modality types, helping you concentrate your training at those particular departments. Let's finally go over to the PSTN Direct Routing Call Insights 
and let's look at the top X endpoints. The PSTN and Direct Routing Insight dashboards just look at data within your PSTN or your direct routing part of Teams. So this does not include Teams to Teams calls. So like in all the other dashboards, first of all, you go and select your directory items you wish to look at. Then you go and choose your Pacific dates. Again, as per all the other dashboards, I will look at last month. This dashboard then has interactive graphs at the top here, showing how many incoming, outgoing calls, etc. here. You can change your measures to look at duration. So over the last month period, it will look at the durations of the call types that we have been making. Or we can change this to cost to see how much we've been spending over those particular days. For now though, I will leave it on volume. Then on the left hand side here will be all of the numbers that have made either PSDN or direct routing calls. You can change this to look at the top eight, 12, 16 or 24 endpoints. You can also interact with these graphs here by clicking on the graph and it will then interact and change the graph to the right hand side here. This will then give you a breakdown per day of what the user has been up to. If you then want to look at the particular call details, you can then go to the particular call details tab here, and it will then give you a grid of all of the calls and who they've been made from, who they are going to, and the duration of those calls, allowing you also to sort on those call types, and also allowing you to filter on those particular columns. Thank you for your time. For any more information about Tiger Prism and what it can deliver for your organization, then please visit our website on tiger.io.